and Chris Hatfield, retired astronaut and author of The Defector. Chris, good to see you. Your thoughts today on this launch. First of all, the importance of it, the significance of it. Well, um, we're testing one of the very few spaceships that can take people to space, and it's a brand new one. So it's a Imagine if there were only like two cars in the world and suddenly someone invented a third one or two airplanes and now there's a third one. So it's a really big deal to have this vehicle working properly. But as you say, it's it's really hard to do and it's taken a long time. Um, two of my friends are on board, you know, former Navy test pilots, Sonny and Butch. So they really want to get it right. And uh, just a little oxygen vent valve, but you know how sometimes you get a, a valve and it starts to just sort of rattle and shake. And this one was like shaking 40 times a second. And, and they're like, well, it wasn't like that in test and we got to figure out why. And this wasn't on the spaceship. This was on the rocket. You know, they're, they're different organizations, but uh, it's important to get it right. But it's also important to get uh, another vehicle that can take people to the space station and back and help open up, uh, you know, future human travel to space. So, yeah, we've we got to get our ducks in a row and then get ready to launch. You know how complex these uh, these pieces are. Uh, and, you know, you're obviously talking about lives being at stake, too. So even a small little valve can scrub the whole thing because they want to make sure that everything is perfect, Chris, correct? Well, if there hadn't been people on board, if it had just been, you know, a satellite of some sort, they, they probably would have at least cycled the upstream oxygen valving to try and let that valve reseed itself properly. But that wasn't in the procedures that they'd planned. And with people on board, you don't want to just sort of making it up as you go. You, you really want to follow the procedures that you made up when things were quiet and safe and everyone was calm. And so they're they're being uh, extra careful, which is the right thing to do. And I've been strapped into a spaceship that then uh, we didn't get to go because of, uh, in my case, it was a, a weather problem. And for the crew, it's no big deal. It's it's you know they've been training for years for this, and one more day of preparation, no big deal. All the families that are not at the Cape, mm -hmm. you know, they get to extend their vacation a day or two. Hopefully, not too many will have to go home. But uh, you don't want to launch a rocket ship, especially with people on board until you're ready. All right, so delayed until Friday. Uh, how long has Boeing been working on this uh, vehicle, This the, the Starliner, the rocket? What can you tell us? Well, NASA made the decision to uh, have private companies, commercial companies, rather than tell them what spaceship to build, just tell them what capability we want and, and then let them design what, what it's going to look like and just meet all the safety requirements. They, were, they and SpaceX both got the contract um, and that was uh, seven or eight years ago um, uh, that they've got the contract. And of course, SpaceX has already completed it and flown multiple times with their spaceship. But Boeing, they tried to fly it back in 2019, it had some serious software issues. They flew it successfully with nobody on board in 2022. But now they're finally to the point uh, where they can uh, think they got everything ready to put people on board. But the rocket itself that's built by the United Launch Alliance, that was the, the thing that that uh, little valve that was buzzing on that that stopped them launching this time. But you're right. Uh, Boeing is is not been um, ahead of the game on this one and they're working super hard to make sure they get it right. Chris Hatfield, retired astronaut, author of a number of books including The Defector. Hey Chris, it's good to see you. Thanks for taking a bit of time as always for CTV News. I know it's busy but who better to talk to us about this one than you. Thanks Todd. Good to chat with you.